Hi, my name is Jamie Brock and in this video I'll be going over some of the processes I used in building the rig for this character which was used for the character animation in my fourth year honours project at university. So in this video I'll play some animation then I'll proceed to break down the rig and I'll go over some of the concepts and techniques I used for rigging the character. So I'll play a bit of animation first, so this was used for a juggling project. So the ca the idea of the project was the character had to show off various juggling tricks and I had to sort of make it look realistic. As you can see the character I used is fairly basic, <laughs> it doesn't even have a face. This is because I just didn't have time to build a complex character but I didn't want any facial animation anyway so it worked out well so I'll just play some animation for you then I'll break down the rig so this is the basic cascade pattern used in juggling it's probably the most basic free ball pattern that you can learn as you can see there's not too much movement But it works nicely. I'll just hide all the controls and the joints and I'll play it again. Right, so let's get started in breaking this rig down. So I'll just turn on the control objects and the joints again and I'll break it down. So we'll start from the ground up. Actually, I'll just go back to the bind pose of the character and I'll hide the juggling balls ok so at the, at the very bottom we have the global control and this is the main control used to sort of move the character to position them you can reorient them and you can also scale them up or down which is very handy to have especially the scaling because if you were to import this character into a different project say for into an environment well it's good to be able to scale them down to fit the environment without the rig breaking so it's good that I've carefully set up a way that you don't run into double transformations which is where everything gets moved twice and it breaks the rig so that's that here we also have a control here, two custom attributes for changing the FK and IK on the arms and the spine. For the spine I decided to just keep IK, but I originally built an FK system but I got rid of that. The arms however can change to IK but I done all the animation in FK for this, as that was much more suitable. So next we'll go on to the feet. So as you can see I've just used one control and it's an IK controller for the foot. I'll just hide the joints for the now. So as you can see you have basic translation, rotation. So this is hooked up via a point constraint so the IK handle is point constrained by this control and the ankle joint is orient constrained so that you can get that rotation there okay and the fun part is the custom controls that I've built in so here we have in the channel box a bunch of custom attributes such as foot roll so if we middle mouse drag you can see the nice effect which is really essential for creating a believable walk cycle so it looks like the character's actually shifting weight onto the balls of his foot before he pushes off and we've got foot tilt which can go both ways we've got heel tilt which is handy if the character happens to be tapping his feet to some music and lastly the foot pivot which could come in handy if you need to make the character like put out a cigarette on the floor 
or squash a bug, <laughs> either way it works well. Uh, so for this, this was basically just, uh, I'll turn the joints back on. So as you can see here, we had the basic joint chain. And what I did was I added these driver joints, which aren't, the skin isn't bound to these. These are just using constraints for the other joints, which the skin is bound to. And this is what controls the foot roll. So if I turn on joint selection, you can see that. So these are the driver joints. And these are controlling, as you can see here, all the joints labelled with a prefix of SK. These are the ones that the mesh has been skinned to. So here's the foot bone. As you can see, the rotate channels are all constrained because a, an orient constraint's been applied. And as you can see, the orient constraint is by this one here and this really helps to get that foot roll so I've placed these up the chain so you can see all I've done is I've copied the chain from the top here then I've rerouted the skeleton so that this is the route and that allows you to get that nice foot roll And also I've added the heel one here, as well as the foot banking controls, so he can tilt his foot left or right. And everything's parented correctly so that it all holds together. Okay, so the, the reverse system, the, the reverse foot roll itself is actually hooked up to set driven keys. So these attributes control these joints. As you can see here on the channels, there's a connection that's been made. And this is via the set driven keys. So what I did was I actually went in and set up the keys for each of these, each of the stages. So for example, you say when the foot roll is at 5, this is the position that it will be in. And then when it goes beyond 5, this joint will start to move. So it looks like he's pushing off, which is really helpful. Because all the joints don't move at once. First, it's the ball of the foot. Then the toe. And that's what allows that nice fluid movement. Okay, so moving onward. Here at the knee we have a basic knee control which is set up via pole vector constraint and that's really helpful as it allows you to sort of move the knees and I've also added this handy display feature which is just a NURBS curve of point constrained each of the end using clusters so I've constrained the cluster at this end, which is hidden, to this control. And I've point constrained the other one to the knee. And this means that no matter how far you drag it, you'll still, it'll still stretch and you'll be able to find the control, which is really helpful. So I'll just go ahead and reset that. Okay, so moving up one now. We have the pelvis control. And this is just controlling the pelvis joint by a orient constraint again. Now we go into the spine. So for the spine I decided to use an IK spine system. This was the first time that I ever used this so it took a lot of experimenting. And I would say that the final result isn't perfect, but it worked well enough. And there was nothing really bad about it. So basically how this worked is I created an IK spline across this chain. As you can see, there's a joint driver chain again. And the original joints are point constrained to each of these so that they stay together, so that they match its position. As you can see here, there's two extra joints, which the skin isn't bound to. There's the hips, 
driver and there's the chest driver. So how this works is, in fact I'll just show the curve because when you create a IK spline it, it creates a curve for you. You can create your own and add your own number of points. So I'll just show this group. Okay, so if we hide the joints here, we can select this curve. If we go into component mode, you can see there's a CV curve or, or a point being added for each joint. And this curve is skinned to those joints so that it has an influence on it. Or rather it's skinned to the top and bottom joint. So this one here. So if I remove this, you can see that controls it. So going back to the curve, if I select it here, and go into component mode, we can select some of these and head over to the component editor. And this will show you the influences. So here's the hip driver joint, which is this one here. And then we have, if we go further up the chain, you can see I've sort of evened it out between the two until they meet in the middle and then they're 0.5 each. So half of it's been controlled by the lower one and half of it's been controlled by the upper one, which is really helpful. I did this all the way up the chain and obviously the very top one is fully influenced by the driver chest joint. So that's a look at how I did that. And then these are just parented to their respective controls, which is nice. So it allows you to move it by translating it or even rotating it. Same with the upper control in the chest. Okay, so let's start. We get to the neck. That was basically the IK spline system there. As I said, it was not perfect, but it did the job for this particular project. As the character only had to be able to do certain poses, nothing too extreme. I thought it was much better to build a rig that suited the project instead of building an amazing rig that could make the character do anything because that would have took a lot more time. So the net control is a really simple one. It's just a simple orient constraint. Same with the head joint as well. The cool thing about the head though is that the geometry is separate and I did this in purpose so it it has a separate skin cluster, so it's only affected by the head. And the reason I did this was so that if perhaps later on I want to redo some of the project with a different head, then it would be really easy to do. So that's why I decided to keep the head separate and also in a separate skin cluster, so it's much easier to get rid of. Okay, so that's the that covers the torso and the centre of the body. Here we have the centre of the gravity control which is very handy, allows the character to easily crouch as well as rotate. And another thing I'll mention about the foot controls is I've got an attribute at the bottom here called foot follow. This allows you to set tell the foot whether it's to follow a certain control or it's on its own. So when it's that world it, it moves on its own. So in other words, if I select the centre of gravity control here and rotate it, you'll see the feet stay put. But this might 
not always be what you desire. So if we change that to COG, which is the center of gravity control, you'll see it very handy. It moves that foot, which is handy if you're animating the character turning around. So to do that, I basically just made a dynamic parent constraint. And again, I used set driven keys. So if I hit the up arrow key after I've selected this control, you can see there's a group node there. And you can see that's got a parent constraint. And here's the two controls, the pelvis and the COG. And again, I've just used set driven keys so that it matters which one of these it's at. So if we set it to the pelvis, you can see it'll follow the pelvis. If we set it to the COG, you'll see it moves with the center of gravity control, but it won't move with the pelvis, which is really nice. So these are just a few things I learned in my rigging journey so far. <laughs> okay, so now we'll get to the the clavicles. So the clavicles are very simple as well. It's just a orient constraint again. And this allows the character to raise his arms, which is normally a, an issue because you get a lot of collapsing. The skinning still isn't perfect, but like I said, uh, I really had to get on with the animation and it would do the job anyway, there was nothing bad with the final results. But if the character had to be in a more extreme pose then I would definitely spend more time weight painting to get better deformations. So the shoulder controls. Now the arm controls are slightly different because I used a different technique. Instead of using the traditional orient constraint, I actually just used a technique which was parenting the shape node of the curve to the joint. In other words, when I'm selecting this curve here, you can see it's actually selecting the joint. And that's because it's stored in the shape node. Here, if you look at the shape node, you can see it's got the name of the curve. And this is handy because it, it matches up the orientation perfectly when you parent it. As you can see it's following the exact orientation it should. And also it means you select the joint itself, which is good. Now the only bad thing about this is you can't hide the skeleton. For example, if I go to the attribute editor here and I find the skeleton and control H you can see it hides the controls this is because obviously the controls are parented to the shape node of the joint so if you hide the joint it will hide the shape node it will hide the the curve the control curve so that was something to keep in mind I personally don't like don't like it if the animator would have access to just clicking the joints but since this rig was built purely for my own project I figured I would get away with it so instead of being able to hide it you just have to go to the show and click off joints and as you can see you can still move everything but the joints are hidden which is handy so I did the same for the forearm here as well and the wrist and also a, another feature that I've got on the wrists as well is my custom juggle hand attribute <laughs> and again this was used by s using set driven keys so as you can see I've set up an attribute where it graphs the ball perfectly which saves a lot of time because you could imagine having to animate all the finger joints separately it wouldn't be good 
so as you can tell here I've got all the orientations really nice and it gets a good curve and this was one of the most important things for the project it was one of the challenges I initially faced before I figured out how to do this so I was pretty happy with the result in the end obviously if I had time like in other rigs I would normally build several attributes like for each finger but for this project I just figured it would be better to create an attribute that actually perfectly appears to make him grasp the juggling ball so if I bring these back here hide the joints you can see that I've just matched it up very nicely which is good and this really makes the animation look so much better when he's actually grabbing and releasing the balls so that was that so next that's basically it for the character rig I think I've covered everything so for the yeah I suppose I could mention like the juggling balls themselves it's fairly simple although initially it was really complicated so for these I just used a control object a group and then the geometry itself as you can see I've made sure that you can actually click the original geometry because it should always be transformed using the control and basically I set up two parent constraints one for each wrist and these appear here so you can switch them on and off and also use the blend parent node as well and keyframe this so it's like space switching so that's basically it I think for the rig as I said it, it could definitely be a lot better especially with the stuff I've been learning over the last few weeks but I think for the project once I made this rig I was really happy using it and it was so useful in conveying the animation and it really made my project look a lot better because I already went over two rigs which I created and they just weren't good enough so I spent time practicing and this is what I came up with so maybe I'll build an even better rig for this at some point I don't know yet but I'm pretty happy with it and I think it's worthy of adding to my showreel and the final thing I'll finish up with is just showing the outliner here and I believe this is very important as well it's to be well organised so here we have the juggler group and I, I didn't actually parent the juggling balls underneath uh, the, any groups because they didn't have to be scaled but if I was to scale the character along with them it would just be a matter of putting them under the correct group so that's why they're not in any group and if you're wondering why all these attributes are yellow it's because there's a character set that's been added containing all the attributes so yeah here's the juggler group we've got the geometry group and I've made sure that none of these groups can be moved and here's the global control group IK group, skeleton group, controls group and the extra nodes to hide so these are the ones like the cluster curves for the knees and the IK spline curve and to show and these are the two curves here that you see attached to the knee controls so that's basically it I hope you enjoyed watching this and enjoyed listening to the insight <laughs> into the rig hope it wasn't too boring but I just thought it would be good to make a video covering everything 
and hopefully it demonstrates my abilities better as I'm able to actually explain the rig and remember what I did. <laughs> so thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Okay.